So in this module, we'll be looking at the fundamentals of electronic data capture. In particular, we'll, we'll be looking at important functions and features to consider when, when uh, deciding on any electronic data capture program. Anytime you're collecting information digitally, these are important concepts to keep in mind. We developed a platform for electronic data capture here at Vanderbilt a number of years ago called REDCap. And just for convenience, we'll be looking through that one, uh, the, the, the features and functions in, in that particular package, not because it's necessarily the best in, the, uh, in, in any particular domain, but because it's an easy platform and, and it turns out it's a very easy teaching tool. So as we go along in this course, in, the, uh, in this particular lecture as well as in exercises, we'll, we'll typically be using this REDCap platform. So I hope as we go through this set of fundamental uh, things to look for and consider for any platform that you'll recognize uh, some of the concepts that we've already talked about in a previous module around research data planning. Let's talk just a little bit before we get into screenshots and looking at functionality. Let's talk just a little bit about the REDCap platform. REDCap stands for Research Electronic Data Capture and the history of REDCap goes something like this. In 2004, we were looking at the enterprise here at Vanderbilt, trying to figure out how we were going to deal with this problem that we had lots and lots of research teams in very, very diverse domains uh, from a scientific standpoint using uh, what, what we would now call uh, especially very substandard methods for collecting and man managing data. A lot of these were very small studies, but some were very large. Some were one to two uh, individuals working together on a study, but some were you know, quite, quite large and diverse in terms of the number of contributors. This was beginning to be a problem because we were seeing uh, risk at, at the institutional level. You know, we didn't want to see breaches in, in data. We were seeing risk for the research protocols and the research teams. Uh, you know, we talked earlier in another module about the, the need to make sure that we're doing the right things in terms of auditing and logging what's happening. Uh, it's, we, we were seeing that this was just not happening in... Um, other, other methods of collecting and storing data. Things like collecting data directly into SAS or Excel or SPSS or even Microsoft Access. So, so we, we realized that you know, people were not doing uh, sort of things in a substandard way because they were necessarily wanting to do things in a substandard way. They, they were doing uh, them in that way because they didn't have tools to do them the right thing, right way. So our hypothesis at the time was that researchers would do the right thing you know, in, in terms of security, audit trails, uh, all of those things that we talked about in the, in the good data management practices, if they were provided an easy way to get and to use those tools. The problem at the time is the same as the problem now. We have many, many research projects at, at a typical academic enterprise like Vanderbilt, but few resources. It takes a lot of resources to create custom programs, uh, when you're creating custom programs, you, you typically have to go through a very long uh, specification stage. You build things out, and then if things change, it, it becomes very costly to uh, support and maintain custom software. So we realized we had this problem of many projects and few resources. So, so we came up with the idea that you know, if we could get the data about the data that research teams wanted to collect for studies, whether they be in... Uh, the, the domain of nephrology or neurology or autism or even, you know, animal research, if we could get the data about the data for individual projects, then perhaps we could write software that would morph depending on the, the, the data that was stored behind the scenes about those studies. So, so that's exactly what we did. We uh, created not only the, the sort of the front end infrastructure to be able to sort of look at the data behind the scenes about particular studies, but, but also uh, we created some very easy tools for our research teams to, to supply and to provide that data for us. So uh, the, the concept is called metadata-driven application programming. Uh, we weren't the first to invent metadata-driven application programming, of course, but I think one of the things that's quite novel about what we were able to do was we created a process and a workflow for our research teams that forced them to own their own projects and in so doing made it easy for them to do the right thing while, while caring the most about the data and the projects that they were undertaking. So in 2004, 
we launched the first red cap project here at Vanderbilt. It was pretty popular. We, uh, we found that uh, that research team told their other colleagues in their lab and they used it again for the next study that they were doing and actually went viral around here pretty quickly, mainly because it was this disruptive technology that was doing something that, uh, that, that individuals couldn't do before. So uh, we started sharing it out with, with other uh, individuals and, and groups as we would talk about this, this solution we had created in, in, in a national meeting uh, settings. And we found out that Vanderbilt was not the only uh, group that, that, or not the only enterprise uh, that, that had this, this problem of having uh, few, few resources and uh, way, way many projects and, and, and not a lot of uh, time for custom programming on individual ones. So we started sharing this. We created an, uh, what I think is a novel uh, sharing model and consortium model where we share it at no cost to academic institutions and nonprofit groups. And since that time, around 2006, we've grown uh, to, to be a fairly large consortium. We'll talk more about that in later modules, but uh, one of the successes of, of REDCap is that it is so prevalent out there at many institutions and, and academic enterprises, as well as nonprofits throughout the world. So, so I want to kind of stop there with the, 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 the history and actually get into some of the, 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 the actual pages and look and feel and functions. And again, we're, we're presenting this in the context that uh, these are important concepts that you might consider when selecting any electronic data capture. We're just using REDCap for convenience here. So uh, when an individual uh, logs into a REDCap system, whether that be at Vanderbilt or Mayo Clinic or anywhere else uh, in the world using it, uh, they're going to see their projects. So, so being able to sort of see all my projects at a glance, uh, ha having the users only see the projects that they should be seeing, uh, you know, in other words, REDCap might be supporting or your EDC capture system might be supporting 500 projects across the enterprise. But if you as an individual should only see three, uh, then, then you should only see three. And so being able to sort of sequester the information and the project information uh, based on users is an important concept. Uh, we also uh, have within REDCap, when, you, when you're seeing those projects, it will, it will sort of pull dynamic uh, status reports from those different projects and be able to show you how many records are in that database or that project, how many, uh, you know, whether, whether the status of it is live or it's in development mode or maybe in archival mode. So just sort of this dashboard and at a glance uh, view of all of your studies is, is a good EDC uh, function. Once you drill down into a given project, uh, the first thing that you see in, in REDCap is you see sort of information about who's associated with your project. Uh, We'll, we'll get into that in just a second, but, but first we'll talk about the uh, data, data instruments. So the first thing that you see over on the left is uh, you see the, the customized data instruments for this particular study, and they really are customized for that study based on that uh, data dictionary or metadata uh, up, upload and, and model that we, uh, we discussed earlier and we'll show a little bit later in this module. Uh, other things that, uh, that, that an individual might see when they're logging directly into their project is a lot of other core modules, not necessarily associated with the individual case report forms and data collection fields, but other features and functions. And again, we're going to go through that as we go along this particular uh, video and in, in the next several to come. Other things that we see there, this is what I was mentioning at first, other things that we see there uh, are being able to look and, and see who's using my project. So over on the left in the main panel, we see the, the users that are registered across that project. We also see that there in the, in the larger caption there, we see the last time I was logged in. And so even, even at this very first screen, there, there's an awareness by the research teams that, hey, we've got auditing going on. There, there, there are functions in place to know when I was here last. The way I like to sort of describe this to, to new users of REDCap is this, these are the things that, that you might expect from your electronic banking uh, system. Uh, that, that's an important system. You, you care a lot about the security of the data and who's doing what there. You should care just as much about your research data. So uh, important here, you know, again, as a concept within any EDC system. So uh, then, then we'll drown, drill down to one of the case report forms. Here I've got a slide showing uh, what might happen, happen if I chose demographics. That first form on the left 
And again, that, that makes sense for a human study. It might make sense for this particular study. If it doesn't make sense for another study, then it's important in our model, at least, that, that REDCap be able to morph and show uh, the, the data that, that's most relevant for your particular project. But within a given case report form, or, or a data collection instrument, we might call it, uh, it's important that, uh, first and foremost, I think that we have human-readable labels. You don't want to have a computer programmer entering the data for you at the bedside when you're working uh, you know, on a clinical study or, or even you know, on a basic uh, science study. You want these human-readable labels that don't look like database speak, but, but really you know, would, would be recognized by anyone. Uh, different field types. You see there over on the right uh, that, that we have uh, some, some types of fields you can just type in text. Some types of fields down a little bit below, you know, might have uh, uh, areas where if you type something other than a number or a phone number or a zip code or you, you, you name it, uh, that, that it will come back and it will say, hey, that, that doesn't look quite right to me. Um, We've got uh, places where you could enter data not in text form, and here you could get it very structured, like the pull-down list for gender that you see there or, or the radio buttons way down below. So, so there, there should be num a number of different ways of entering data uh, into a case report form, but it should all be consistent and readable by the uh, end user. Uh, data validation, so on those type in fields. If it's supposed to be a date, then you know, again, as I said earlier, it should, it should force it to be a date. And if you enter something else, then it, then it should come back and nag you a little bit until you get it right. By the same token, sometimes we have ranges. So if it's supposed to be a number, it might be a good idea to go ahead and set up from a data quality module going in that, that this number really should always, always fall between the numbers 0 and 10 or 100 or 1,000, whatever makes sense for your particular study. Um, one, one of the nice ways that you can force getting good quality data in is to, is to not give the end user any choice. So, so here we've got gender and a question about pregnancy there. If, if we were to do a, uh, a you, you know, quick, quick study where we didn't enforce these values, uh, the, these choices, a lot of times what we might get back is um, you know, inconsistency in the data reporting. Things like male, female, M, F, uh, zeros and ones for the same type of same data field. So it's a good idea not to give uh, end users any choice if, if you've got things that, that are categorical and you can code in like we've done here. Uh, on that line though, it's important that uh, not only do we uh, show the end user something like male and female, but as we mentioned in an earlier broadcast uh, video, it's, it's, it's a good idea to code those variables behind the scenes so that uh, the system can keep up with the fact that zero was female and one was male, but the end user doesn't have to see it. Other things here might be branching logic. So that question about pregnancy way down at the bottom of the form, that makes sense if the individual is a female, but it really makes no sense and, and might uh, lead to corrupted data if we leave that field in in the case that an individual is male. So any uh, electronic data capture system, you might think of that you're considering, you might want to look at whether it has branching logic and the ability to discern when, when and where to ask uh, specific questions. Um, in, in REDCap, we think that you know, once you're uh, entering data or looking at uh, information for a given subject, it's a good idea to give you a status report of all of the instruments and case report forms for that particular uh, individual. Uh, and again, whether that be a human or a mouse or, or a test tube, whatever, whatever your record is, uh, is uh, collecting data on. But over on the left there, you see some little buttons that, that appear once you're in context of a patient. And that's going to give us the uh, status of the individual, you know, that, that uh, case report form or instrument. Uh, as well, it serves in REDCap at least as a navigation tool so that if you click on one of those red buttons, it would take you directly to uh, the next case report form for that same individual. And then finally, uh, on the case report forms, one of the things that we found uh, people asking for quite a bit early on in the electronic data capture uh, uh, creation process for individual projects was the ability to not only show this on the screen, but, but make these uh, same fields and these same uh, data collection instruments available via PDF. A couple of ways that that's very useful. 
The first way is if you are uh, submitting uh, your, your study to an IRB or to a human subjects ethics board, a lot of times they will require you to uh, give, a, give detail on the types of co collection you're doing. So being able to, on a case report form page, uh, click a button and have it spit out the PDF for you where, where you've got a clean, clean uh, set, set of questions and options, that's very useful when, you, when you're going through that type of process. We've also found it useful for teams that are a little bit uncomfortable that maybe the, the system could possibly be down at some point and maybe you know, you know, their wireless adapter breaks right in the middle of when they're wanting to collect data. We also found it useful to be able to sort of auto-generate these PDFs and just have a copy sitting around just in case the, uh, the, there, there's some sort of uh, catastrophe in the, in the the internet is not working at a particular time. So, you know, again, in our EDC platform, we found it very useful and our, and our end users find it very useful to be able to have these auto-generated uh, PDF reports being, being able to be exported. So once you get through with uh, thinking about uh, getting data into a system using uh, forms that, that humans would be able to read and, and interact with and, and enjoy using at the bedside, then, then the next thing we typically think about in the electronic data capture world would be exporting data. This is very important. Uh, uh, we we won't, won't be using it as often as we use the data import, uh, sorry, as we use the case report forms and uh, data collection instruments, but it's very, very important that we're able to get the data out after the study or even during the middle of the study if we're doing interim analyses. One of the things that we found in the research domain is that uh, in a place as, as large as Vanderbilt and in, in places that are as diverse as the groups that are using REDCap across the world, we found that there is not one common statistics package that is used. Uh, clinical trials will typically use SAS. Uh, cl clinical, uh, you, you know, other groups might use R or some other package, uh, SAS data, SPSS. We, we really don't want to make that decision or have that individual uh, research team have to make that decision early on in, in the process. And so what we've done is we've created a data export module that will enable the, the, the end user research teams to, to specify what data they want to export and to, to export it in any of those common statistics packages. We also believe that it's important to uh, uh, think about confidentiality of data and so, so with that we've created some data de-identification tools that will be able to obfuscate the data as it's coming out, uh, even shifting dates uh, in, in the case where we have dates of service so that we get uh, somewhat of a de-identification process if required or if, if uh, recommended by the research team. So I think that uh, covers this particular topic and we'll pick it up in the next video.